Okay, in this video we will start spawning some portals. Um, so we have to create our portals before we can spawn them. So go to your sprites folder and find the portal folder. And then there are two folders in here. There is an open uh, animation and there is an idle animation. And for now we are just going to use the idle animations. But later when we spawn our uh, monsters, we will play the open animation. So first of all, we need to click on the blue portal here. And we need to set it up so that Unity knows that the blue portal is working from a sprite sheet. And to do so, we have to select this portal here. And we have to go to our sprite mode uh, in here in the inspector and select multiple. Because now Unity knows that there are multiple sprites on the same image here. Besides that, we need to use the same pixels per unit as we did with our... Um, what was it? Our tiles. So remember to put the pixels per unit to 300 or whatever you use for your tiles here. When you've done that, you click apply. So now it knows that it's using more sprites. Um, and basically you can do the same for the red one. Click on the red one, select multiple and 300 and click apply. So we'll just start with the blue one and then we can add the red one after. When you have the blue portal here, you click on the sprite editor button because we need to slice out every single sprite here on the portal here. Um, and if you're using your own sprites um, and you don't have a sprite sheet, well, then you can skip this step basically. Um, but I am using a sprite sheet here, so I'm going to cut out these. So I select slice and I go to type automatic, it's fine. Then I click the slice button and then it slices out the portal here, as you can see. In lots of slices here and then I click apply and when we have clicked apply well then our um, what is it called the portals um, sprite sheet is now divided into single sprites as you can see here so now we have this little arrow we can click so that we can uh, select all the sprites we need to do the same for the red one so select the red one go to sprite editor go to slice Select automatic, click slice, and click apply. When you have done that, you can close down the editor. And then we can start creating our animation. First of all, we need to create an animation from our, um, what is called our portal here. So we can create a new folder called animations. So right click on the asset folder, click create, click folder, and write animations. And then we go to sprites and we go to our portal, idle, select the blue portal, open it up like this, select the first sprite, hold down shift and click on the last one so you actually select all of them, then drag all of them into the scene. When you do so, it actually pops up with a window asking you to name your animation. So go to the asset folder, find animation and call this one blue idle. Let's call it, uh, yeah, blue idle, it's fine. So we have blue idle, and you can actually do the same for the red one. Open the red one, click on the first one, scroll all the way down, hold shift down, click the last one, and drag them into the scene, and call this a red idle. Then you can go to the prefab folder, and drag the blue one in. Actually, we can rename this to blue portal and the red one we can rename to blue uh, red portal there we go so now we have our portals and you can simply take the blue one drag it in here and the red one and drag it in here to your prefab folder so you have the portals inside the prefab folder and yeah you can see if, if we move them out here and we play the game now you'll see that they should both be animated but right now we can't see them as you can see because they're behind our sand here. So as you can see, our grass or our tiles has order layer to zero. And the um, smaller the value here is, the more in the background they are. And the higher the value is, the closer to the camera they are. So we need to order them with minus. So just select all your things here, all the grass, and say that all the tiles here sort order is minus one and then you can select the portals and say 
there um, orange layer is zero that's fine so everything that is um, on top of the grass is zero or above everything that is below the grass is, is negative and the grass itself is negative one okay so if we play the game now you'll see that the portals are on top of the tiles and they are now animated here so now we need to be able to put them or spawn them somewhere on the screen here so we need to create some functions um, actually if you have created your prefabs here you can just take them and delete the ones from the scene because we are going to add them from our scripts so just go to scripts and open up the level manager so first of all we need to decide where to actually spawn our portals um, so we need to create two fields, one for the blue portal and one for the red portal. So in the top here, before our dictionary, we can make a private um, point and call it blue spawn. Let's call it blue, just blue spawn is fine. And then make a private point called red spawn. So we have a blue spawn and a red spawn. So right now you can see we are written, writing this in two lines. We can also do like this, blue spawn, comma, red spawn, and write like so. And this will give exactly the same result as if we had it on two lines, this is just short, shorter. I'm just going to keep it like this. So now we have a variable for the blue spawn and a variable for keeping the red spawn. So now we can actually start setting these up. Let's go to our, uh, and the reason that I'm saving in here is because I'm going to use these later for my pathfinding because I need to find a path from the blue point to the red point. Anyway, we need to create a function here. So in the bottom we made a private void called um, spawn portals. So this function will spawn the portals in our game. Blue spawn is equal to new point 0, 0. So we want to place the blue spawn in the top left corner here. here. But so this is tile is 0, 0.0, so this is where we want to spawn the blue one. Okay, so now that we have that, we can start spawning it. We can say instantiate. Um, we need a prefab, of course. So now I don't have anything to instantiate. So I need to go up here and make a private prefab um, game object called blue portal and a private game object called red portal. So these two are my prefabs for spawning um, my portal. So I can actually call it blue portal prefab just to make sure that I know what it is when I'm in my code here. Red portal prefab, there we go. So now we have a prefab for the blue portal and for the red portal, but we need to be able to access these from the inspector so that we can add the prefabs. So take civilized field here and make sure that both the blue portal and the red portal are serialized. When you have done that, we go back and try to instantiate this um, blue portal prefab, and we need to spawn it on the position of the tile that is in position 0, 0.0 in the grid. So we need to take our tiles. This is exactly why we created the dictionary before, and we need to get the tile on position blue spawn and we need to get that position. So transform dot position. And actually, yeah, we can actually just do like that, transform the position. And then we need to tell it if it needs to rotate. It does need to rotate, so we can say quaternion dot identity. So it keeps its own rotation here. So there we go. So now we have actually used uh, the tiles um, dictionary to get the blue spawn point and get the exact tile position there and spawn it there. Okay, um, let's see what happens. I know there is one mistake, but we'll you'll see that when we start this. Um, yeah, let's try to call this because we create our level and we don't need to spawn our portal until our level is complete. So we can just go be below all this when we set the limits of the camera and everything. We can call spawn portals. And actually this one should be named spawn portals with an S. So we just go down here and put an S on it because it's going to spawn the red and the blue portal, right? 
So this function is called after we have created our map here and everything. We're done creating the map and then we spawn our portal. Let's try to save. Out here we select our level manager and you'll see that there's a blue portal spot and a red portal spot. So we need to go to our prefabs, take the blue portal, place it on the blue spot and take the red portal and place it on the red spot. Okay, let's see here. So, as you can see, our portal is spawned in position 0, 0.0, but it is spawned in the top right corner, and that's because this uh, the anchor point on the tiles is the top left corner, and the anchor point of our portal is the center, so it places the center on the top left corner here. So, to fix this, we will have to write some code so that we can center our portal on our tiles. Um, and some of you might be thinking right now, can't we just adjust the pivot point of the portal so that it's also in the top left corner and then it will be placed in the center of the tile? Well, we could do that, but the fact is that the blue portal or the portals doesn't have the exact same size as the tiles. So if we do so, well, then the tiles will actually, or the portals will not be placed exactly in the center of the tiles. Um, I can try to do this. You shouldn't do what I'm doing right now. Um, but I can try to demonstrate if I go to the idle here, select the blue, blue portal, select sprite editor, say slice and, and say that the, the pivot should be top left and I click slice. Well, then if I play the game, let's say try to apply. Well, then if I play the game again, then you'll see that the blue pole is kinder centered, but it's not totally in the center of the actual tile and it goes a little over the edge or the border of the tile here. And that's not ideal. I would like to center it on the tile. And besides that, we will also need to access the center points of the tiles at all times later when we pathfind, because when a monster is moving on the map, we need it to move to the center of the tile, not to the top left corner. So the functionality that we are going to create right now or write right now is uh, also going to help us later when we pathfind, because we need to figure out a way so that we can return the center um, point in a world position of the tile here. So we need to open up our script. And in our script, we need to go to the tile script. And in here, we need to create a world position. So let's do that. Let's say um, public vector2 world position. And we need to make this into a property. So we need this structure and then write git. And this one needs to return the actual center uh, of the tile. So the center world position of the tile. Um, and that is, yeah, if we have a, a tile here, it needs to return this position, not this top left position, because transform the position is this position, and we need to return this position instead. So to do so, can return new vector2 and it's transform dot position dot x um, plus get component dot sprite renderer dot bounce and bounce dot what's it called size dot x divided by two so that's um, this one center here uh, on the vertical axis, then we need to get the horizontal center and that's transform dot position dot y minus get component sprite render that um, what was it bounce dot size what that is size dot y um, and what else think that's it and then we also need to divide this by two and we need one more parenthesis here I think yeah there we go so to get the center we take the x position um, and the x position of the tile is this top left corner here right and then we um, multiply or we add half of the size so we get to the center up here and then we do the same with the Y position, we go all the way down here and take half of that so we get the center. So now we have this world position here is going to return the center point of each tile because it takes the bounce the size of the sprite renderer here. I think I had one more. Yeah. 
it's only two polar entities here in the end. So it takes the yeah center point. So this one can return the center. So if we go to level manager now in the spawn portal, and instead of using transform the position here, we can use dot get component tile script dot world position. So if I save this and jump back to the game and rerun it, then you'll see now it's still placed very, very wrong. Let's see what's wrong here. I think maybe my, yeah, my tiles, are st my portal is still sliced, um, still sliced with this pivot point in the top left corner. So what you'll see now, give me a sec. So what you'll see now is the fact that the top left corner of the sprite here is centered on our tile, but we want the center to be centered on the tile. So I will have to go back in here and say sprite editor and say slice and then say center and then click slice and apply. So you didn't do what I just did to move the pivot point. So you shouldn't do this last step here. It was only for demonstrating that we can't move the yeah, pivot point to fix uh, fix the centering. So now you can see our portal is actually centered on the actual tile here. Um, it's a little larger than the tile. So you could actually go and change the pixel per unit if you want to and make it a little smaller. But I think it's fine that it goes a little over the edge on the top. So we also need to add a red portal. We can do that by taking the code we have already. Copy and paste it and change this one to red spawn and use red spawn down here in the instantiate code. And the spawn is, I put it at is was 11.6 here. So that's where I'm going to have it. And if you save this and go back to Unity, then it should be totally fine now. So now we have a blue portal here and a blue portal here and I forgot to change the prefab. So I need to go back to the script that was a little too fast. And here I need to write red portal prefab, of course, and then save. And then go back. So now we have a blue portal in the top left here and a red portal down here in the edges or end of the end of the path here. So that is how you can spawn the portals and use the grid positions to put anything in our game. I hope this was understandable. Um, so thank you very much for watching and remember that InScope Studios is a community founder page So all your support is very important to me. You can support me in different ways You can go to the patreon page where you can support me and get all the scripts and um, different um, tutorials uh, Tutorial projects that I've ever created or you can support me by getting one of my project as a standalone product So thank you very much for watching and remember to follow me on Twitter like my Facebook page and subscribe to the channel if you haven't done it already